With the recent release of the James Webb Telescope's majestic first images, we got a glimpse at what the $10 billion observatory is capable of. But although these initial images are stunning in so many ways, they only represent the icing on the cake, because we still have much more to look forward to. Webb has possibly more than 10 years of deep space observation left, according to NASA. In the coming weeks, months and years, we will see all kinds of cosmic phenomenon, like distant planets, young stars, enormous galaxies and chaotic black holes. Now that we have an idea of what to expect from Webb, you might be wondering, now what's next? Well from what I have found, the ambitious telescope has a packed schedule of science programs ahead. Welcome to the channel of Clout Boss, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay notified. Webb will revolutionize our understanding of the universe, but first, researchers need time to analyze data and make sure that they understand what they're seeing. Webb has already captured more mind-blowing images beyond the ones you saw on July 12th and the Cartwheel Galaxy is just one example. This chaotic and beautiful image you are looking at is the Cartwheel Galaxy, revealing new details about star formation and the galaxy's central black hole. Webb's powerful infrared gaze produced this detailed image of the cartwheel and two smaller companion galaxies against a backdrop of many other galaxies. This image provides a new view of how the cartwheel galaxy has changed over billions of years. The cartwheel galaxy, located about 500 million light years away in the sculptor constellation, is a rare sight. Its appearance, much like that of the wheel of a wagon, is the result of an intense event a high-speed collision between a large spiral galaxy and a smaller galaxy not visible in this image. Hold on to your intergalactic hats, because NASA will be rolling out the new images in coming weeks at nasa.gov web and on the NASA web social media channels. Some of those images give a first look at Webb's capabilities, but are not part of science programs. In the meantime, you can revisit the first images at nasa.gov slash web first images. They also have the page where you can find the full array of images and data at full resolution. News releases on results will be coming too, once they have been reviewed. You may have seen scientists on social media posting their preliminary findings from web data. But before NASA publicizes results in news materials, they wait for the findings to be peer-reviewed, meaning, the science community has assessed the results. Science is a collaborative process of asking questions, testing out ideas, discussing with colleagues, and doing it all over. The peer review process generally happens when researchers submit their findings to a journal or conference. It may take a little while, but it's worth it. There is other publicly available data you can check out. Anyone can take a deep dive into what Webb saw during the commissioning period, such as images of Jupiter and some of its moons. The current Webb observing schedule is set and available. If you want to find out what Webb is looking at this week, visit the Space Telescope Science Institute's weekly schedule to find out which cosmic objects the observatory is checking out. The full buffet of Webb observations for next year, known as, Cycle 1. During its first cycle, it's going to put those capabilities to the test. The Cosmos Web Survey is going to be looking 13.5 billion years into the past, about 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. And what it's going to be able to do is, observe galaxies that are much further away from us than we've been able to do before. We are going to be able to find some of the earliest galaxies that have formed in the universe. The Hubble Deep Field looked at one part of the sky, and stared there for a long time. That was really our first look into the distant universe. With Cosmos Web, we are going to go a big step beyond that, so not only will we be able to look at objects that are much further away from us and much deeper into the universe's history. We've going to cover a much larger area of the sky. So we are going to be able to observe many many thousands more galaxies than we are able to see in the small area of the Hubble Deep Field. 
So right now with Hubble at these early universe time periods, you don't see very many. And what you see is a smudge, just a little bit of blob. With JWST, NASA will be able to resolve structure, and also tell us a lot about how those galaxies that evolved from the very early universe until today, because we'll be able to see galaxies across a wide range of distances way back. So we can put together a timeline of how their structures have grown overall. The images are going to have a very high resolution, which means we can resolve a lot of structures and see really fine details that we can't do with Hubble. So I fully expect some of the initial images we see are going to be jaw-dropping. And overall, we estimate that we're going to detect several thousand galaxies in the very early universe, but how many we actually detect tells us something very important about physics. So even if we detect less than what we expect, that's still really interesting from a scientific point of view. If you had spoken to people that were expecting observations from Hubble's data when Hubble launched and told them about all the amazing discoveries Hubble has made since then, it would probably blow their minds, right? They never would have imagined we'd see galaxies as far as we do or that we'd observe planets around their stars and more. So we fully expect James Webb Space Telescope will find things we never even knew to ask about. Unlike JWST, we can't see infrared light with the human eye, but we can detect it through heat or experience it visually using an infrared camera. Infrared light, you can think of it like heat radiation. So everything glows in infrared, you and I are glowing in infrared. A lot of things in space give off infrared light too, like stars, nebulae, and galaxies. But to detect the faint faraway target scientists are after, JWST has to be away from the Earth's warm atmosphere. The problem is that Hubble is actually quite warm, Hubble is in Earth's low orbit, and it's about the same temperature as the Earth. That means it's actually emitting in the infrared. And that's a bad thing if you want to detect faint infrared light from very far away, because you are swamped by the light coming from the telescope itself. So the James Webb Space Telescope has to be cold, really cold minus 233 degrees Celsius cold. So the way NASA achieved that, is firstly, by making the telescope open, it doesn't have a tube around it. But what it does have is a huge sun shield, and the telescope sits behind that sun shield. James Webb is located at a place called L2, 1.5 million kilometers away from the Earth where the Sun and the Earth are always on the same side of the telescope. In this location, the telescope main instruments can cool to near absolute zero temperatures and receive the infrared light. Then, they can take that light and produce images, or analyze the light to learn what materials are present. This is known as spectroscopy and is a major feature of JWST science instruments. Scientists have four instruments on the telescope, and these instruments are optimized to do different things. So obviously, the imagers take images of the universe in both the near-infrared and mid-infrared part of the spectrum. The spectrographs take spectra of different objects in the universe. So spectra are like, well you can think of fingerprints of the objects. So spectra help tells us about the chemical components, and what atoms and molecules are in the various different things that we are looking at. Using two of these instruments, near cam and near spec, and the power of the telescope, one team is going to be able to take images and reveal the composition of individual stars in our nearest large galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy. Want to learn more about the exciting discoveries in the cosmos on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Clout Boss and click on the bell to never miss one of our videos in the future. Feel free to show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you engaged with the content of our post.